Good morning. As always, what joy it is to gather around the table of the Lord. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for choosing St. Joseph Parish family to celebrate the Eucharist. The gift of the Holy Spirit empowers Christ's church to preach the gospel. The gift of the Holy Spirit promised by Jesus at the Last Supper enables Jesus' disciples to boldly proclaim the good news, continuing Jesus' mission. As we celebrate Pentecost, we are called to open our hearts to the same Spirit so that we, too, might do our part in the work of the kingdom. We draw your attention to the yellow tape that marked the positions in the pews where one may be seated. When you enter a pew, please go all the way in. The next person moves in to the next spot with the yellow tape. This ensures people do not have to cross over other individuals to reach an empty space. Thank you for your cooperation with our ushers and greeters. In our prayers this week, we let us remember all those who are celebrating their birthdays. We pray for all those who are ill, especially those dealing with coronavirus, those people who are sick at home, in nursing homes, hospitals, or in hospice, and all those who have died, especially Daniel Barrett, Agnes Carney, Don Collette, Alan Dalbeck, and Alice Melendez. We respectfully ask that those individuals who have cell phones would check to make sure that they are turned off at this time. It is required that everyone use their face mask while in the church, other than the moment when receiving communion. Please leave your mask on until you have received the body of Christ. Then, step aside, take off your mask, consume the host, and reposition your mask before returning to your pew. Let us be mindful at all times about the health and well-being of those around us. We ask everyone to remain in church until the end of the final hymn. Then, everyone is asked to remain seated and wait to be invited to leave section by section, conscious of social distancing. Thank you to those of you who have placed their offering donations in the basket as you enter the church. If you forgot to do so, as you leave church, there are baskets at all other church doors. As parish revenue has dropped because of the pandemic, your weekly offering is greatly appreciated. Thank you for your stewardship of treasure. Today's second collection is for St. Joseph Catholic School Tuition Assistance Fund. Please make checks payable to St. Joseph School Tuition Assistance Fund. Thank you for your generosity and support of Catholic education. Presiding at this liturgy will be Father Noel. Let us stand as we prepare to celebrate the liturgy. Please greet the people around you with social distancing respectfully.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. And welcome to our celebration of the Eucharist as we come together in God's name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Happy birthday, everyone. Because today is the birthday of the Church. Feast of Pentecost, we see red all around us, and reminding of the gift of the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised that he breathed as we hear in today's Gospel on all gathered together, just like us coming together, hopefully always open and receptive to the graces, gifts, and blessings that God wants to offer us this day. And we know that he gives us all those gifts and blessings to help in building up his kingdom. So as we prepare ourselves, let's ask forgiveness for the times we may have been reluctant to be his instruments, instruments of all, of peace, and of reconciliation. So for a moment in silence, we take responsibility. Lord Jesus, you stood in the midst of your disciples.
O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your old church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time of Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as the fire which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At the sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrasia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is the Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Come, Holy Spirit, come, and from your celestial home, Shed a ray of light divine. Come, Father of the poor. Come, source of all our store. Come, within our bosoms shine. You, of comforters the best. You, the soul's most welcome guest. Sweet refreshment here below. In our labor, rest most sweet. Grateful coolness in the heat, solace in the midst of woe, O most blessed light divine. Shine within these hearts of yours and our innermost being filled. Where you are not, we have naught. Nothing good in deed or thought, nothing free from taint of ill. Heal our wounds, our strength renew. On our dryness, pour your dew. Wash the stains of guilt away. Bend the stubborn heart and will. Melt the frozen, warm the chill. Guide the steps that go astray. On the faithful who adore and confess you evermore. In your sevenfold gift descend. Give them virtues, sure reward. Give them your salvation, Lord. Give them joys that never end. Amen. Alleluia.
On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Deacon Larry was sharing with us last Wednesday morning at our school mass that he went into a church on vacation during the Feast of Pentecost once and everywhere there were balloons. And the balloon said, Happy Birthday. That's why this is such a key day, a very key day in the life of the church on this day when Jesus, as he promised, would give them and with cooperation, he and the Father sending the Spirit of God to come upon those first disciples of his, so that they could go out, as we hear, he said, Peace be with you, as the Father sent me, so I send you. They obviously went, did a good job, because here we are, many miles away from where they were, many, many hundreds of years later, 2000, after this time, and the church obviously spread because of the witness of these men and all those other heretic Christians who lived the good news of Jesus Christ, who built community, welcomed people into community. And it's said that when Peter proclaimed that remember Peter, the first pope, that in one day alone, 3,000 people were baptized. And so received, as we all did on the day of our baptism, the gift of the Spirit, but then the fullness of the Spirit we get on the day of our confirmation. And I think 98% of us here have been baptized and confirmed. The 2% because some have not yet made confirmation. So we have all received the gift of the Holy Spirit to empower us, to strengthen us, to help us to leave here every Sunday, to get out of our beds every morning, and to be faithful witnesses to the good news of Jesus Christ and the promptings of the Holy Spirit that desires to touch our hearts, touch our minds, so that what comes from our mouths, what enters our ears, are always what we are hearing today, the spirit that opens us to the truth, that what we hunger for and yearn for is the truth according to Jesus Christ, to our God in what Jesus' his Son taught us, the prophets in the Old Testament, but Jesus who came as light into the world, to guide us and to direct us, and then the gift of the Spirit that enables us to be seekers of the truth as long as we live, and then sharers of that truth, God's instruments, in the world in which we live. But the world in which we live, we know, can be very challenging. This is our second Pentecost celebration during the COVID pandemic. And this past 15 months in particular have certainly been very challenging ones for so many people. When I reflected on today's scripture readings and reflected on the reality that we've all lived throughout our world, we can certainly understand what it was like for those first disciples who gathered in the early church they were all together huddled in one room, 
Like many people have stayed in their homes throughout the virus until they receive their vaccinations and until they can come into an environment like this where they feel safe, those who are not yet vaccinated, as well as those who are vaccinated with social distancing. Thus, of course, the discernment of our Bishop that we should continue wearing masks for another period, out of respect and care for everyone who comes inside our church building. And the early Christian community, that was what was primary in their mindsets, was the well-being of all people and the openness to sharing, enlightening others, the message of the good news. But these disciples today, we hear, they were afraid. Because these are the early days. And Jesus, we hear, he comes into their presence. They're in that upper room, they're in that room for fear of the Jews. Afraid that they might meet the same fate as well. They have forgotten all that Jesus taught them. Because they've allowed fear to control them. And we know what that's been like. To be fearful, to be worried, to be anxious, to be preoccupied, to be concerned, obviously, it's important about our health and well-being. But sometimes it can lead us to act in a way that with all the pain and suffering that's happened, so many people, maybe that you know, maybe it's touched you in your life, the COVID virus in a very particular way through the death of a loved one. And so naturally, all that pain and suffering, that we have to live with it, we have to deal with it. Some people shut it out and live totally enclosed and don't want to hear about it. And sadly, that can lead even at times to indifference, because then we don't want anything more to do with it all. Just stay secure in our one spot. But the Lord Jesus, who appears in today's Gospel, is the same Lord Jesus who is present to us this morning. Present every day, from that moment onwards. We celebrated his ascension, no longer in his earthly nature, in a human body like ours, but now he is able to be present. And through the gift of the Spirit that we've all received, we receive that comforting, consoling presence. Because one of the words that's associated with the Holy Spirit is comforter and consoler. And certainly that's what we need to experience. Comfort and consolation, but also the gift that Jesus gives today, the gift of peace. To rest in his peace, in his loving arms, in his embrace that tells us, trust in him. Jesus, I trust in you. I trust in the gift of the Spirit that God has given to me through baptism and confirmation. And so, this day, as we think of all the pain and suffering that people have endured, we know that also, despite what has happened, and many people, yes, have taken time to think and reflect, maybe readjust their lives, prioritize as to what is it that really matters. So many parents have shared, Father, we realize two things. The richness of coming through all of this is we appreciate what the teachers do every day for our children. Because parents have been very well, quite a while, caring for the kids at home. We in St. Joseph's School have been fortunate to be open through almost all of the pandemic. But for a few short front first few months, but since that we've been open. But parents, for whatever length of time they were looking after the kids all day, came to realize what teachers do each day with children. But also the other one was, Father, even though our income has been reduced, we appreciate the time we get to spend with our children. So something good can come out of things that are not so healthy. And that is people coming to that awareness, that realization. But we know that our world 
in many respects has not changed. Even with the COVID pandemic, we still look at the world in which we live. There are so many injustices, so much cruelty, human trafficking, human slavery, the people who are suffering because of terrorism, maybe even domestic terrorism, that which has become maybe a new word throughout the pandemic that we've become so much familiar with living in this country. We never would have thought that we would be talking about domestic terrorists. Thinking about all those people who feel discriminated against, thinking about those people who feel excluded. And yet here we are, living in this world, professing to be Christian, professing to have accepted all that the Lord has given us. And so we're being asked, be conscious of what is the reality of the world. Do not become indifferent to what is happening in our society. Sure, protect yourself, be weary, take all the precautions that are needed for the COVID virus. But don't forget all the other issues that need to be addressed in our world. Think of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. And after being elected Pope, his first trip outside of Rome was to a place in southern Italy. Does anyone remember what that place was called? Lampedusa, Lampedusa. And that's the place where many of those people fleeing, coming as immigrants from North Africa, crossing the Mediterranean, trying to find land, getting to Europe, seeking refuge. That's where, and we know many people lost their lives in making that very difficult crossing, seeking a better life, seeking refuge, seeking peace, seeking a healthy environment. And Pope Francis went to visit there at Lampedusa, and this is what he said in his homily. He said, how many of us, myself included, he said, have lost our bearings? We are no longer attentive to the world in which we live. We don't care. We don't protect what God created for everyone, and we end up unable even to care for one another. And when humanity as a whole loses its bearings, it results in tragedies like the one we've witnessed, the people crossing the Mediterranean. We beg forgiveness for our indifference to so many of our brothers and sisters. Father, we ask your pardon for those who are complacent and closed amid comforts which have deadened their hearts. We beg your forgiveness for those who by their decisions on the global level have created situations that lead to these tragedies. And he ended with these words, Forgive us, Lord. As today's Gospel reminds us all, the gift that we've all been given, the gift that Jesus breathed upon them in that upper room when he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And then he commissioned them to go out and to be witnesses to the truth. He spoke of the truth and the importance of reconciliation. They were called to be his instruments when they received the gift of the Spirit. We here this morning, having received the fullness of the same Spirit, are asked to do the same. Be conscious with the gift of the Spirit that the fruits of the Spirit should be evident in our lives what we say, what we do, be words that speak the truth, words that seek the truth from our God, from our beliefs and our understandings, 
the moral values that we've been raised with, the teachings that Jesus taught, that we be faithful to them and that we inspire others by the example of our lives, of our words, of our care and concern for all people, regardless of who they are, where they come from, what they believe, what their orientation is, what their political belief or leanings are, that we recognize all as our brothers and sisters. We must not betray the gift of the Spirit that we've been empowered with to go out of here each Sunday, and for some of you each day when you come to Mass, strengthened to go out as instruments with God's Spirit. Because on that first Pentecost, when the Spirit broke into their lives gathered there, something wonderful happened. Up until that moment, despite all that Jesus had taught them, they still didn't have the power of their conviction or the vision. They needed the gift of the Spirit to motivate them, to believe in themselves and the gift they'd been given. And so they went out then, and true to the Spirit's presence in their lives, they made a difference. And that's what we we're asked to do for the last few years, Hopefully during the pandemic we've not forgotten those three words that Jesus said a long time ago and that he says to us every day of our lives, but especially on a Sunday when we finish Mass, he asks that we go make disciples. And we do that by the example of our lives. Pope Francis also in his encyclical Fratelli Tutti says, there's a key to understanding how important it is to fight against the indifference that can be part of some people's lives so that we no longer tolerate that which is happening or an attitude that we're holding on to that is destructive and betraying the presence of the Spirit within us. He says, the decision to include or exclude those lying wounded along the roadside can serve as a criterion for judging every economic, political, social and religious project. Each day, we have to decide whether to be good Samaritans or indifferent bystanders. So the Holy Spirit that broke into their lives on that day desires to break anew into all the people here this morning, regardless of what stage we're at in our life's journey, to strengthen us to be witnesses. That's why we need to remember the words today spoken also in the sequence, beautiful words, all of them, but maybe so that we feel empowered, we need to say anew, heal our wounds, our strength renew, on our dryness pour your dew, wash the stains of guilt away, bend the stubborn heart and will, melt the frozen, warm the chill, guide the steps that go astray, Give them joys that never end. And so we ask the Spirit to burst in anew into our hearts, into our minds, into our lives, so that we can be truly effective instruments of our God. And so I pray, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us, and use us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us.
Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father, by the gift of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the leaders in every nation, state, and community, may the Holy Spirit guide them as they work to protect life at all stages. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill and for all frontline responders dealing with the coronavirus, especially here in Florida, we pray for the resources they need and their good health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the dedicated men and women who serve in our military, that they may be protected in their mission to make our world a safer place. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, that they may be comforted by the uniting of their sufferings to Christ's redemptive suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those victimized by slavery and human trafficking, may God pave their way to freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us, the people of St. Joseph Parish, may God continue to draw us to himself and bring harmony and peace where there may be division, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially the victims of coronavirus, may they come to experience the fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord for eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all the intentions in our box of petitions and those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear us as we place our prayers before you and answer them according to your will, as we ask them all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Please join in our presentation song, Send Us Your Spirit.
abundantly the hidden mystery of the sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth and profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus, our Savior. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And of course, these special people get to the first Holy Communion. Well, there's actually some of them. The third, going to your third, because you have it still last Wednesday, and second communion. Yes, wonderful. I'm going to stand where I did last Sunday. Okay, and you can come first. Good. And the prayers you come behind. And body of Christ.
Oh, let us pray. O oh God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out of honor may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you all for being here this morning. Thanks for your participation and your presence at the Eucharist today. And I thank everybody involved in ministry and people who are involved in ministry because they listen to the Holy Spirit. The Spirit calling them, urging them to give the gifts they've been given in building up the Kingdom of God here in our liturgy and in our wider community by being involved in local non-for-profits. And so we know we don't have a lot of ministries happening, but all of them in the church are still happening. And all our seasonal visitors have returned, so we are in need in all of the ministries of the liturgy. We need help readers, lectors, extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion. And of course, we're always blessed to have Anne singing, but she's always open to somebody else coming and standing out here as well. And so, anybody who's got the gift of song would like to be a cantor or a musician. We could have one musician with the cantor and the music director. So maybe that's your gift. The Spirit saying, get up and do something. So hopefully, some of you will respond and participate in the ministry here in our church. You know, I observed something very special. You probably, the girls were wonderful. But I noticed something to my left that was happening when the three children were up. When the parts where the priest just bows, guess who was bowing with me? So he's in formation. I've been telling him to think about being a priest. And if I don't ask, he might not answer, even though I know his parents would certainly be very happy. But, as always, that we may all be open to where God's Spirit is leading us, guiding us, and indeed telling us at times we need you to think a little bit more about whatever, with the gifts you've been given, where you can be active in our ministry. The Lord be with you all. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I wish the seasonal visitors who are returning, some of them back to their northern homes, we do wish you a safe trip and we look forward to your return again. Thank you for the many ways that you've been part of our parish family and we look forward to your return. Now remember, go, go in peace glorifying God by making every effort, effort to make disciples. Thank you for joining us online. Have a blessed day. Please join in our session song, Creative Spirit by Musee. Thank you. 